Praise the Lord. I'm trying to see what. Um, so, like Michelle reminded us, this is uh, Ascension Week. It's the seventh Sunday after Easter. And uh, actually, next week is Ascension Week, Sunday. Uh, by next week, Jesus would have been taken into heaven. He spent uh, 42 days with his disciples after he, he rose. Praise God. And uh, the theme of our the service today is that you shall receive power. Um, the scripture we read was one of the conversations that Jesus had with his disciples after he rose from the dead. And he was, uh, they were asking him questions in their confusion. What's going to happen to us now? They were like, you have raised our hope so high. And now you are telling us that you are on your way out. What's going to happen to us now? And then he said to them, they were really focusing on you know, things that they, they, uh, they, you know, they were dealing with before he came. And he said to them, those are not the important things, but you are going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when you receive power, you will be able to become my witnesses. Now, I want to just um, say this to us. What is the most important responsibility we have as Christians while we are still on earth? Does anybody, what, the, what do you think, why are we here? To preach the gospel, yes. Eh? To, to be with our family, yeah. To get, raise godly seed, yeah. To represent him. So, can we look at uh, the book of uh, Matthew? Book of Matthew, chapter 28. Can somebody read? Can we read from verse 16? So meanwhile, the 11 disciples, you remember there were 12 disciples, you remember that? But now there are 11. What happened to one? He has died. He, he betrayed Jesus and died. So there were just 11 left. The 11 disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed to the mountain where Jesus had set uh, for their reunion. Verse 17. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some of them heard back, not sure about, about, not sure about worship, uh, about risking themselves totally. And Jesus, on the third, went right ahead and gave them charge. Can you give us a different version? I'm not sure I understand what this version is telling us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please read from yours. So, based on that, what is the most important reason why we are here? To witness and to make disciples of Christ. And populate the kingdom of God. Is that true? Now, let me ask you a, a question. 
and I'm not going to ask you to answer. Are you fulfilling your, your work, your responsibility while you're here? How much are you engaged with this responsibility that we all agree? Do we agree that's why we're here? Do we really agree? How much are you fulfilling that responsibility? Or how much, no, let's put it a different way. How responsible are, are you to this responsibility? Does it even actually occur to you that that is why you are here? There's a, there's a phrase that Christians always use. <laughs> they say, you know, when they are trying to, you know, say that they want, you know, kind of show that they are serious about their Christian work. They say, I want to make uh, heaven. How many of us say that? <laughs> how, many of us, how many of us really think that that's what is our most important objective, to make heaven? No, don't lie. I'm not, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Even if I had to be a good man. So how many of us believe that our most important goal in this life is to do what? To make heaven. How many of us? Why are you afraid to say? Uh, no, say what you do. I agree with you. <laughs> it's the most important. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. Praise God. Is that is that something? Do you understand what he's saying? Do we understand what uh, bro, our brother said? What makes you a Christian? What is actually who, who, when you talk about your life? How do you see yourself today? Are you a child of God? Are you a, are you a part of the kingdom of God? Praise God. <laughs> So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm having difficulty trying to understand and make, get us to understand some of the things I call the misconceptions about our Christian work. And, you know, you know, the Bible, Jesus, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If we don't get this things right, it affects the way we see everything and the way we do everything. When you are born again, you are brought into the family of God. As long as you remain a child of God, the Bible says our citizenship is where? In heaven. You say you are ambassadors. Our residence on earth is temporal. It is guaranteed that except we deny the faith, we already belong. So, making it your sole objective to make heaven is like, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. It is, it's more like saying, my most important responsibility is to breathe when I'm alive. You will breathe as long as you are alive. I hope I'm not confusing us. Jesus did not tell the disciples when he was going, make sure. In fact, look at the way he even put it. He said that, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't get worried about this. He said, believe in me. Believe in God and believe also in me. He said, for in my father's house, there are many, men. I'm only going to prepare a place for you. He said, for where I am, there you shall also be. So he made effort to give us a guarantee. And then someone said, we don't know even the way. He said, I am the way. Just keep following me. You'll get there. 
Just keep following me. Just keep following me. I am the truth. Just keep obeying. I am also the life. Just keep living the life I live. You will get there. So don't let your heart be troubled about making heaven. You know, I, say, I hear the people say this. I just want to make heaven. As though the heaven... <laughs> I just want to make heaven. I just want to make heaven. And you know, this takes so much of our energy. What then is actually should be taking our energy? What should be taking our energy is to fulfill our responsibility for which we are left here. If making heaven is a sole objective of our being children of God, we should live as soon as we are made God's children. Do you agree with me? If we should live, there's no point. What then? Why? Why am I going to be here <laughs> the way we so clear? But making heaven is a guarantee. The Bible says, "It said, I give unto them eternal life.' So we have it." He that has a son has a life. He that has a son. Scriptures that says, he said, you know, in the last days, he will say to them that are on the right, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your father. Yes, I know that. But it is just the reward that we are talking about now. Is a reward. Now, you see why I'm saying this is that I want us to, because the way we are going to really begin to enjoy and really fulfill our life is by living up to our responsibility. Do you realize that if in a particular day you have things to do and you are not able to do them, something somehow within you will begin to feel sad and depressed? Does it, does it happen to anybody? No, the reason why our joy is not exuberant as Christians is because we are majorly not living up to our responsibility. And I want to say it is not our fault most of the time. It's not our fault. It is the limitation that we have. And Jesus knew about that limitation. So he said to the people when he was living, I am going to send you the promise of the Father. He said, but wait. Stay in Jerusalem until you are empowered. It is not easy to be witnesses for Jesus without the power to do it. The world is a hostile place. The temptations are just too much. The distractions are numerous. The devil is, is vicious. He will create things around you that will make you so unproductive as long as the kingdom is concerned. But you see, the point I just want to make, because we usually don't have enough time to share. The point I just want to make to, uh, with us is that Jesus was particular about the Father. He said, wait. Wait in Jerusalem. Don't go running around. Don't get distracted. Everybody said, don't get distracted. Because when you really know what you need to be able to fulfill your purpose, to be able to be effective, and you value being effective, that's why I said, I, don't, I want to knock off that whole idea that the responsibility of the Christian is just to make heaven. Somebody provokes you and you get so mad and you are angry and you are now shouting with the person. You know what? I don't want anybody not to make me to make heaven. Don't you? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let's, let's get more responsible than that. I don't, you know, if anybody will make me not to make heaven, I'm not going to allow it. No, no. Relax. Heaven is yours. God has called you to it. All you need to bother about now is that am I going to be able to fulfill the purpose for which he kept me here? He has granted me. The Bible says his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus said to us, he said you know, the, the, the God has given us eternal life and the life is his son. 
He came on to his own, the whole, own did not receive. Say, but as many as did what? Receive him. He has given them the power to become children of God. What manner of love that the Father has given to us that we shall be called what? Sons of God. Let's enjoy it. Let's just be happy. You know, you know, we are. We are his children. And if his kingdom, the headquarter of his kingdom is in heaven, that is our destination. But while we are here, we need to fulfill certain responsibility. Otherwise, we'll be derailed. You see, the problem with being irresponsible is that you are going to get derailed into irresponsible lifestyle. You know the reason why many people are living a very horrible lives? Because they don't know what their purpose is. Life without purpose leads to death. When you have really, when you don't understand what you are here for, you anything just looks like it. So Jesus said to them, I want you to stay in Jerusalem. I want you to focus. And the Bible says that is what they were doing. The Bible says they were together in one place. You know, can you put that last um uh, Acts chapter one? I think it's verse 14. Is it verse 8? Yeah. Can you put it for me? Uh, no, no, that's not what it, the last verse we read. I think it's 14 that we read. The last verse. No, go to verse 8. I know I'm coming to this quickly. The time is gone, actually. Verse 14. He said, and they were all together and constantly united in prayer. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Why were they doing this? Because Jesus said to them, do what? Wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. They were constantly in prayer along with the mother of Jesus and several of the women and the brothers of Jesus. Now, look at that Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Go to Acts chapter 2 verse 1, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you, my brother. On the day of Pentecost, now go back to what they were, oh, just verse, verse 1. Don't be, uh, your hand should be not be too fast. All the believers we are meeting together in one. Now look at verse 2. Suddenly. You see, now let me tell, let me let me remind us. You see, many of us don't spend time seeking what God wants you to seek. The reason why prayer is not important to you because you do not know that it is prayer that empowers you to fulfill your mission. The reason why studying the scripture is not important to you is because you never knew that you need to have this word dwelling in you richly. The reason why, you know, you are not investing time in meditation in the word of God is because you, know, you don't know that is what transforms you into the kind of personality that is capable of fulfilling God's purpose for your life. So you live as though you really have no mission. You wake up, you just do anything that comes. Did your phone, be, and I, I think I watched something, you know, a, a couple, you know, what, what telephone have done to us is so bad. You know, I think, I don't know where I watched that thing. This, uh, this guy was just trying to make fun with the wife. So, the phone was standing and the wife was busy doing something. Then he would make one call. You know, one of the noises that the phone will make. And the wife will go and look. <laughs> then, and then he will make another, uh, and the wife will go and look. You know, he kept doing this. This one is so distracted. Trying to respond to what the phone is doing. Now, see what I'm trying to say. So, now, let me say this. Jesus said to them, wait. Why you are not able to become a witness? Why you are not able to preach? Why you are not able to share the gospel? Why you are still ashamed of the gospel? And you know you are not supposed to be, isn't it? Why you still feel awkward telling the gospel to your friends and you know you are not supposed to be? Why do you still lack boldness telling everybody that you meet that Jesus can save their life? The Bible says, learn to wait. Give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to study. Give yourself to building up your life. You already have this life, but it needs to be developed. 
Remember we said that the Christian walk starts with being born again. So in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere make of the word that you may do what? You may grow. Everybody say you may grow. There's a development that happens in your spirit man that makes you bold to speak the word. Makes you able to speak about Jesus. Makes, you know, knocks off all the awkwardness, knocks off all the shame, knocks off all the, you know, reservations you have, all the fear you have. The Bible says, now look at it. Go to that uh, uh, Acts chapter 2. Look at what happened after the Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. I and um, people are going to pay for my time. Praise God. I want you to go down. Just go to chapter 3. I'm trying to find. Now go to verse 5. Let's see what is in verse 5. Something I just want to say there before we go. Okay. Go, keep going down. 6. Verse 7. Verse 9. Okay. Look at verse. Oh, sorry. Look at verse 10. Um, I think, I don't know why I'm, I'm not. Okay, just move down. Keep moving down. I, I, I want to show something. Um. I have, I want to see, okay. So, after they, after they had the Holy Spirit, after the empowerment, you know, just said to them, I want you to remember that they were hiding in the room. They were in the room. You know, sometimes we say they were hiding. They were not hiding. They were obeying the voice, the command. The command is, don't go anywhere. Now, I don't even encourage any of us to go sharing the gospel. If you do not have, you are not empowered to do it. Because most of the time, you will mess it up. You will actually create problems doing it. Let the burden that you want to share the gospel drive you to spend time studying, spend time praying, spend time asking God, fill me with the power to be able to do this right. In fact, when it comes, it will be exactly the way Peter. You know. So when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, look at what happened. Jesus said, Peter stepped forward with the eleven and others. I said, Look at the way he started, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews, resident of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. Everybody say boldness. <laughs> he did not start awkward. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Let's just see one of the few things that Peter. Just uh, these people are not drunk because they were making fun of them. They were saying that they were drunk. They were saying that they are stupid. Peter said, these people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. It is nine o'clock in the morning. You know, in the morning. Much too early for that. Verse 16. No. What you see today is predicted long ago by prophet Joel. Praise God. Don't you like to preach like that? <laughs> Don't you like to preach like that? When people want to mock you and mock the gospel, you are able to bring out not just, not just the facts, but with power, with boldness, with clarity, challenging their, their uh, what's the right word? Eh? Not just their theology, challenging their mockery. Challenging their, their, their sarcasm. And they're saying, you know, you, you, you know, not just because, because you know it, but because in the process of waiting, your life has been so transformed. And they're not able to say to you that you are a hypocrite. Part of the process of waiting is that your life is being transformed by what you are learning and by the spirit that is in dwelling you. You are being changed. The Bible says, as we behold his glory in the closet. Everybody say in the closet. Like a mirror. He said, we are changed. There's a change that's happening in your life. 
And that change emboldens you. You are not afraid that they are going to say to you, you are a hypocrite. I saw you the other day. Or that, is it not you that has, you know, many, there was a few years ago, we used to, we still live in the west side near Meadow Green. We used to hold our Bible study in our house for, for some guys. And then there's this friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. He just comes over to Bible study every day. And one of the days, <laughs> Uh, these two ladies came from Guyana. I don't know how we met them, and we invited them to the house. They were in the Bible study, but they work in Canada as, uh, you know, they don't have papers. They work in these nightclubs and so on. <laughs> so so we, we were there that day. This young man that comes to our Bible study every day, and when he came, and this, uh, he doesn't know that this lady <laughs> sees him in the nightclub. <laughs> So, so when he was there, I said, I know you. <laughs> he said, how do you know? He called it, I don't know any of the nightclub, because I don't go to them. He called one nightclub and said, ah! Well, I said, he said I, um, what, what did he use? He said, uh, they said, what he used? What he used is that I am fa- I've been, I've been uh, punctured. <laughs> Something like that. You know? So, it is, it is both that this waiting transforms your life, conforms your life, emboldens you, expands your knowledge, and you are empowered in boldness. So like Peter, that's what Jesus is talking about. Praise God. So my brethren, I just want to encourage you. You will notice that I'm not so bothered about I'm bothered about people that are not coming to church. Not because, and I wanted to make this point today. You know, when we invite you to church, it is not because we want our church to be populated. It is because we want you to be transformed. That's the reason. Especially me. Because people know I'm not a full-time pastor. So, having a big church does not pay my salary. You know what? know that. I'm not. So, all we are trying to do is to help people to live the life God really wants you to live, that it might go well with you. So, Jesus, the instruction that Jesus is giving to us is designed for us to make a success of our life on earth. So, we are not supposed to be here burdened about making heaven. We are supposed to be here burdened about how to fulfill our assignment here so we can get into heaven. You know, when we return, we can return with boldness, with with satisfaction, with gratitude to God. You remember the, when God gave, he, said, he called his servant and said he gave them talents. You remember that talent story? Say the one that had five, five talents came back and said, you gave me five and I returned five. What did he say to him? Uh-huh. What did he say? We should know that. What did he say to him? He said, he said you have been faithful in little, he said, I will give unto you authority over nations, the nations. So, the way to grow in this kingdom, the way to experience the beauty that God has created is that as you are faithful in what he's doing, he keep on lifting you. He keep on promoting you. He keep on increasing you. You know, so that you, are not, you will not just be angry with people who have been promoted. You can become a testimony. Praise God. Our time is finished. Let's pray so we can dismiss. I'm sorry. Each time I'm making doing my very best to I will get somebody to preach some other day. Let me know whether they will be able to be the time more than me. <laughs> Let's stand up as we pray. Praise God. So can we thank God that we are not struggling to make heaven. He has brought us into it. Father, thank you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ a new creature, the old has passed away, behold, all things are new. Say, now we are ambassadors for Christ. And as though God beseech you by us, we beseech you in Christ and be reconciled to God. We are reconciled. Say, for our citizenship is from heaven. From whence we look for the coming of the Son of God. Jesus said that I came from above. And you say, we are seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are seated together with him in heavenly places. Our destination is guaranteed because we belong there. 
we belong, we belong, we belong to him. We belong to him. He said, fear not little children for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of God does not come by observation. He said, the kingdom is already within you. You belong. You belong. But while we are here, he said, go into the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them and teaching them as you have learned to observe all things that are commanded you. You have learned it. You are living it. You are obeying it. Go teach other people how to obey so that their life can be blessed as your life is blessed. Can you ask God this? No, Father, teach me the art of waiting to be empowered. Teach me the art of being in your presence of taking my assignment on earth serious enough that I am not just wasting my time being distracted by both, you know, the, the important and non-important things, being distracted by what the world is pursuing, but just focusing, knowing that my life is hidden in Christ and Christ is hidden in God. Father, thank you. I pray that God you release a spirit that the word spoken this morning will become life in us. That wisdom will come upon us by this word. That passion will seize our hearts because of this word. Lord, teach us the art of waiting. Reveal to us the most important important assignment we have and that is to dwell in your presence to seek after you to behold your beauty to seek you thank you Jesus praise God I just want us to pray for my friend Kevin Kevin can we pray for you can we also stretch our hand and just pray for my this my beauty, my handsome brother? Ah, thank you, Lord. Father, bless this young man. Bless this young man. Grant him, O oh God, the desires that he has of you. Align his life. God in the direction you have created him to go. Make him a testimony to his family. Surprise people by the transformation you are going to bring into his life. Prosper him in his ways and give him the knowledge of you. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Let us share the grace and fellowship in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Let me just make today the benediction over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord set his face towards you and show you mercy all around. May the Lord empower you to become true witnesses of his kingdom. May the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, rest with you, guide you and stay with you now and always. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Father. Thank you for your great presence. Thank you. Amen.
I thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord.